So I'm Dan. I'm Dan. We are together. We form this powerhouse, this mm. dynamo. The podcasting powerhouse known as the Unpanderers. Panderers. That's Unpander, us, folks. folks. We don't you're pander. listening, you're probably an Unper. We love our Umpers. Mm. Up to Not Umpers. Yeah. Um, umpers. Unpers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> unpers. <laughs> Uh, what we do here, I thought of a way to summarize it. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like you're uh, you're on a date or you're on a job interview, somewhere where you're real nervous. It's your first time, mm. and it's a hot day. Oh my god, it's like ninety eight. But because it's a job interview or a date, you're dressed a little bit. Yeah, you're overdressed, and you can just feel sweat pooling down your back. You're wearing the store down your spine. Oh, you really yeah, that sweat's going right in your butt crack. <laughs> and it's like, whoo. You say that in the middle of the interview. <laughs> you go, whoo. <"Whoa." laughs> like, did you one. just say that because sweat pulled in your butt crack? <laughs> I did, sir. Another one of my strengths, <laughs> moving on. Just segue with it. Mm. Uh, can I borrow so, your ice cube? Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Right out of the glass. From your drink. <laughs> and you give it back to him. <laughs> Bloop. <laughs> so much. No. I'll drink to that. We are a 21 and older podcast, and we say, think of, talk about, pretend to talk about, almost reference, cannot be used against us in a court of law. Yeah. Whatever we may imply or you may infer, it does not reflect upon our own opinions. It's merely no the projections of your mind. own mind. <laughs> Ooh, that's us, folks. Yeah. We're here. In a nutshell. Hmm. You want to talk about the, uh, to start off with the. So we, we've been inju- adjusting our sound levels, trying to figure things out. Several times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Nick came along and found something called the Harvard Sentences, which are almost like tongue twisters. Just like it, but a little different. Yeah. Well, like, like a read one? A really good one? Yeah. It's like phonetically balanced sentences. Mm. Uh, so open the crate. Open the crate, but don't break the glass. Saying that... Um, uh, for reference, people at home, you can actually use these sentences. They're often used to test microphones and settings and sound equipment because I guess it's the, in such a short sentence, you can run the gamut of human sounds. Is that the best way to put it? Inflections, syllables, long vowels, short vowels, everything. It's right there in these short sentences. Hit me with another one. I don't even understand what it means. Like phonetically balanced, this uses specific phen- phenemes, phenoms, phenoms. Yeah. phenoms. phenoms. I guess it's, it's because, like, um, like you use like um long. I said um like eight times in a sentence about language. I uh, use <laughs> long a's and diphthongs and oh. different sounds with your tongue, your mouth, your lips, your teeth. So it uses all the different muscles in your in your face, kind of correct, and, then and the probably mouth, different everything. inflections too. Huh. And different combinations therein. Oh, in the shortest amount of words. Yeah. The hog yeah. crawled under the high fence. I guess that mm-hmm. does that uses different parts of your mouth. So it's not really it's the opposite of a tongue twister if you really think about it. It's a tongue relaxer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> it's a different Relax activity. Tongues, it's a different activity. Mm. Relax them tongues. Uh, move the bat over that hot fire. Ooh, I like that one. What about the one with friends and rob you? Oh, thieves who rob friends deserve jail. <laughs> that's where <laughs> we stand. Yeah. Thieves that rob uh, friends do deserve jail. Hmm. So, that's a good warm-up. Uh, and we're going to get our sound levels perfect if we could just speak yeah, the yeah. words. Mm-hmm. So, what's going on in, uh, in your life, Dan? Mm. Break it down for me. So, the thing. Feel it. Should mm-hmm. I start this? I'll start off with that because it's a mental block. It is a mental block. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll 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 rewind a few days. So p- last <laughs> week we got some uh, furniture, my wife uh-huh. and I, and I put it together in the free time that I had, which is very little, and beautiful. Three pieces. Gallon of furniture. Wrench furniture. Yeah, yeah. It took. It's like it's oh, similar to a, a brand that everyone knows, but I can't say because we're not Swedish. N- it's. It's similar to that. It's not that because right, it's, it's, cheap, that, right? it's slightly it. cheaper than that. <laughs> we can say it. We can shit on their products. I think that's a value brand. Um, and I put that together. 
So then on Sunday, which is like yesterday, we went out to a local place to eat. And I noticed that her flat tire symbol was on, which it, it happens every now and then. She's gotten fixed before. And oh. yeah, we also stopped at the grocery store, came back, and I unloaded all the groceries. And then she said, oh, I'm going to pull my car in. So right then and there, you know, she knows the indicator's on. I told her. I go inside. She pulls the car in. It's her responsibility. It's her car. Most of the time. Okay. <laughs> I usually do it to be kind. If I if it's me pulling the car in, I go, I mean, I'll take care of this right now. Which I thought maybe she would do. Mm-hmm. So fast forward to this morning. and oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, it. It's just... So I wake up and she's already pissed off because she's dealing with my son. She takes him in the morning and sometimes he has a fussy morning and he doesn't want to eat anything but the one thing that he loves and we're out of it. So she has to deal with him for probably about 45 minutes. So she's a little frustrated. I come out. I seem well rested because I stay up late and then sleep. (laughs) I sleep probably like seven hours a night, which is decent or less, which is not so decent. So she's already pissed off. (laughs) And then... She goes out to get in her car and she sees the indicator lights on and she just like blows up. She says like, I, I have to take care of it. Like, like what, what if it was your car? Like she's like making all these references that don't make very much sense. Like, yeah, I would take care of it. It was my car. Even if it's your car, like I would take care of it. I do most of the stuff around here. that's mechanical, electrical, physical. I'll do, I'll, I'll do all three of those things pretty much. Regularly. You it with a couple of physical things you did. I noticed. I did. Yeah, I did. See that? So I did notice, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You set it up. You call that setting up. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. For, put for the punching setting. bag where we're going to put it, and then we're going to hit it. Mm-hmm. Over and over and over. So she's just been pissy all day. She's been pissed. Go she ahead. Like, Go ahead. Yeah, oh, she stomped yeah. out. She stomped out, and then she <laughs> forgot something, came back. She had to fill a, a milk bottle, and she spilled it over, like, all over herself. That happens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was just like... Did she look at you? Like, it was almost your fault? She did not look at me. She okay. was right next to me as I was pulling my egos out of the fr- fridge, and she was just zoned out. So Gone. she's still <laughs> pissed. She wants me to probably apologize for something that's not my fault, which is <laughs> how it kind of—I guess it's how it kind of feels in the marriage normally. That sounds like a relationship. Yeah, I noticed uh, you set up this man-woman economy I wanted to get into. Uh huh. Are men always in charge of car stuff and physical labor? And women are always in charge of um, signing the kid up for daycare at the right time and figuring out when you're supposed to meet so-and-so's parents and writing down the schedule more or less? I don't know. That sounds kind of sexist. It's our word of the day. Sexist. (laughs) (laughs) We put the sexy in sexist. (laughs) Hey, gang. I guess that's the way it's, it was supposed to. I mean, the way it was naturally. <laughs> I can't say that without being sexist. The way it occurred. Uh huh. Yep. Yep. It occurred. And it, it did. It should have. It should have. have. It, it naturally evolved, I would say, if you believe in evolution. Um, yeah. <laughs> Hit on another point. All the unpanders who don't believe in evolution, <laughs> skip fast forward about a minute from yeah. now and you'll be good. You'll find the flat earth discussion oh. and you can skip past that one again. And then you can skip, skip past the next one. Of, <laughs> just skip most of the podcast. No, but I was thinking about how, um, so this is a little separate. This is a, a, a this is me divulging. Well, I divulged. I'm going to diverge here. So women take care of like everything in the home, usually, like home wakers. That's the standard thought. And it stems back Are to Are they us better at laundry than men? <laughs> uh, uh, I'd say it's about equal in today's age. Interesting. <laughs> but, but. On one second, I want you to tell the audience uh, some a new CD, a new movie you got into – or video games, something very media friendly. I'll be right back to show you all something. Oh, it's, it, he's going to bring down a laundry basket. <laughs> he has it behind him. Oh, I wonder if he's la- his laundry is almost done. Uh, he, I, I did not expect him to leave me hanging right there. I had something I was going to unload other than laundry. I wonder if he can hear the beep. It's a terrible way to start. 
I wonder if he's got. He was crying when he started this podcast. We had to restart because his tears were just filling up his eyes. Okay, he's back. Well, see, his eyes are a little bit red. What I was going to say is, it's interesting you bring that up because I'm doing laundry for the house. <laughs> you do, you do her laundry. Oh, well, I'm really doing laundry. That's why I thought this was a great time. In fact, there was probably five minutes left on the dryer, but if I waited, it wouldn't have had the impact. So yeah. And it's probably nice and hot, and it makes sure you don't have wrinkles. Mm-hmm. It folds perfectly. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, folks. You know what that is? The QV? Yeah, but do you know the symbol? Wawa. Yeah. Isn't that kind of cool? I thought yeah. it was cool. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. Right? Yeah. And it's not technically a name brand. I mean, it is, but it's not on here. So it's... Yeah. I think copyright. it's legal. Exactly. It's breaking copyright without yeah. breaking copyright. So, what did you go with, by the way? Oh, um, I was going in a direction. Going in a direction here. So, men were gatherers, hunter gatherers, and then women were the homemakers, right? Oh my god! It's almost like a puma symbol. That's a deer. deer. But anyway, yeah, they were. That's literally how it evolved. I yeah. Men were stronger. Let's say. Let's just say it. I believe they are. No, I believe I believe they are. Oftentimes. In general, we'll but I was thinking. Later, but yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I was thinking, why aren't women more in charge of like building furniture? Like, wouldn't they be like making things for the home too? Like, where does the line get drawn? <laughs> that's, that's a good question, but I, I almost think I guess there is no line. It's just arbitrary. Mm-hmm. Like, um, my girlfriend makes more money than me, so I do more homelier things oftentimes. Oh, you're the homemaker. Uh, not all the way. Like, she still has to cook. Because I, when I cook, it's, like, not that good. Is she quietly bitter because of that? Uh, because of that? <laughs> more just of the, in general? More of question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Mm. Haters going to hate on that shit. <laughs> but, um. No, I guess. You and, think people end up doing. Well, in the house dichotomy, we're a man and a woman. You're living with someone. Do you end up doing the jobs you're best at? You try to do like, the jobs you want to do, regardless of how good you true, are. True, but then what do you settle on? Like, kind of what you're best at? Like, they wouldn't be good at trash and recycling. Are you kidding me? They have no clue what they're doing. They don't break down cardboard. They, they're afraid to get dirty. Like, I'm fixing the Wi Fi. Garbage. Yeah, Sitting like, if you imagine if they tried that, it's like. And now that would be different in other households. I'm not saying that no women can do these things. I'm just saying in, in our households. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It always, you kind of have to like find the things that you want them to do and just slowly neglect doing those things over a long period of time. <laughs> <laughs> so that now you're, well, there's a, what's that preface? The um, guys who are technically can do laundry just as well as anyone else. They feign like they don't know what they're doing and they uh-huh. do a bad job a couple of times. Uh-huh. Woman says, "Get no, you're doing it all wrong. Get out of the way. I'll do it." Shrink her shirt then, once. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then cashmere. And then, I thought that was ironable. <laughs> Shit. I thought that was throwing the dryer on super hot. Uh-huh. You're right. I mean, and then you screw up once, and boom, maybe you're off the hook forever. Yeah, you're deemed completely inept from one moment in time forever. Hmm. Interesting. I feel better hmm. though. She didn't want to talk to me this tonight. She was trying to ignore me. You ignored harder, though, didn't you? Yeah, my oh, man. I wouldn't call it ignoring. I just existed peacefully in my own serene bubble. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're turning this episode into man and woman. We're not getting into it. <laughs> we're not going to get full. We're not, gonna, we're not, we're doing not really going to get into saving it. That, saving that for an episode where we keep it private and don't let anyone find it. Now... Um, my smirk for the week, because I think we don't have a episode to post it, uh, but off Eagles, folks, they finally did it. They won the Super Bowl. Ooh. Many parties were had. Are you, I'm actually sick of partying. I'm done. You're tired of it? <sighs> it's exhausting. You gotta drink, you gotta celebrate, you gotta party. Went to the parade with my three-year-old. Ugh. Terrible, terrible, terrible. I know I already mentioned it on that other podcast, which probably won't air, but you know. Yeah. Too many people. 
And as I grow older, I don't know, maybe I'm softening up. The bonus is that it's, it's cold out there, right? Yeah. I went, to, I went to a live eight concert back Wait, in no. the Philadelphia. Yeah. Wait, that was like, I thought that was like 89. So you, you were more than like five or six. No, or seven, no, right? that was, that was when I was, uh, <coughs> 20. There's one. Well, it's 20. Okay. Maybe there was a redo. In the, oh, sure. Yeah. No, anyway. it was terrible. There were so many people and it was midsummer and everyone was sweaty and people yeah. didn't have shirts on. So it was like, you'd slide through the crowd and just. Slippery, slippery. Oh. Now you were 20. Did you go with relatives or anything? I went with uh, a young female named Kelly. Oh, dang. And you her... could have had a blast, I thought. But no. Nah, it was too much. Yeah, but we stayed up the night before with friends. Mm. Doing stupid stuff that just made us tired. That's the way kids go. <sighs> it's exhausting, that partying. Man. It is. It truly is, folks. Now that we're adults, I like to do things a little. You're being very selective with your laundry. I'm not seeing any sensitive items. Somehow you have all the creative custom, uh, not custom. But. I was stretching the truth. Really, I just do my own laundry. <laughs> <laughs> but but I mean, at least I don't make make her wait for the dryer. Is that what you're? No, no, no. I'm the only one who did laundry tonight. Uh, just a happy coincidence. So no, I don't really do laundry for the house. I wanted to sound altruistic for a while. Mm-hmm. Which will bring me to my word of the day. Mm -hmm. Ulterior. Like ulterior motives? Interesting you say that. Is there any other word that's attached to ulterior? Can you even say ulterior with another word? I can't think of one. I'll use another one. How about this one? Um, Vulcanized. Like vulcanized rubber? Can you say that about any other item? You can do it to other materials, apparently. I'm not sure what it means. I I couldn't find it. Vulcanization is like what? You heat it to a certain temperature? I guess, and then it, it it freezes back to a solid or something, super solid. I don't know, heat folks. It with sulfur, sulfur and equivalent curatives or accelerators. So you can do it with any type of rubber. <laughs> so it's just vulcanized rubber. Or polymer. So oh. I think we did that for a piece of, the, of something that went into space. We made it. We vulcanized it before we sent it up there. Okay. That makes sense. But it's like a material no one ever heard, hears of unless they're working with it. Fair enough. Fair Everyone's enough. like, yeah, that material. Oh, we're, we're smart. We know what you're talking about. And I started looking up words that are only followed by one other word, but I couldn't find a, a proper way to word that, oddly enough. Huh. And if I, I Google search sense. ulterior, ulterior meaning, ulterior synonym, ulterior epicure? No, that's really? that. Nah, never mind. Bleep that out. That's someone else's blog. <laughs> Damn. Don't bleep that. Yeah. Ooh, no meaning. Accidentally putting on a blog on here? Uh, not only I'm pandering, sir. Good thing I think I said that wrong, thankfully. Mm-hmm. My word My word was uh, mandible. It's actually like, your jaw. Yeah. yeah. But uh, ants yeah, have. ants have yeah. mandibles. That's exactly why I brought it up. Because oh, no. I was like, nah, I didn't want to really bring it up until I, I read the sentence. Uh, it's talking about the jaw or, or a bird's beak, but they called it either half of the crushing organ in an arthropod's mouth parts. <laughs> His Sexy. mouth parts, yeah. You're reading an erotic novel, huh? Yeah. That's pretty cool. And then they had like close up pictures of like ant mouths, and I was like freaked out. Like, is the first, like, I don't like spiders, and this is like, this is probably the reason why I don't like spiders. Like, the weird mouthy bits. Oh, you froze. You back, you're, you're frozen. Oh, you okay there? Yeah, I'm here. You just froze for a second. Are you sure? Idea? I think it was that might have been me. Okay, that's fair. Because spiders have crushing mandibles. I don't know. Something about their mouths are different than like any other animal. You think about it. So is their eyes, though. So is a lot of parts of the spider. I'm not a big spider fan. Something about them. Just, mm. Um, they might be out of this world. Alien. <laughs> Do you think there's any – how crazy would that be if there was a species on Earth that was alien in origin? Someone said it was um, – What's spe- Mushrooms. Animals. Mushrooms. I think I've heard that before, which makes sense because they don't fall into the plant category. Yeah, and they um, they can survive in space and they have a different what? like structure for the way they store energy. How do they survive in space? Like they can what become inert. They can be a little like spores. Oh, interesting. You could land on a meteorite as a spore and then spread. Right. And then, hmm, through space and time. Interesting. 
I mean, aliens all We're around here. us. We just don't know. How boring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fun guy. What can I say? <laughs> Someone had to say it. Um, huh. Ooh, how about a, a scenario for you? This is a real one. You got to go in? Yeah. So my friend's friend, uh, friend's friend was dating a girl for like five years and she was like super flirty. Mm-hmm. With everybody. Other, yeah, yeah, everybody. She's an attractive girl, flirty. Uh-huh. Blonde. My other friend, uh, her boyfriend doesn't use Instagram. Whatever. Okay. It's a, this is important. So a friend of the couple was looking on Instagram one day and was like, she posts like pretty much practically like nude pictures of herself and really? like what's gets your, lots of likes and lots of guys comment on her what's stuff. What's her... Instagram. You have to you have examples. You. Do you have no, examples? You can't show have, any. This is, this is a uh, story from the past, so it actually uh, didn't turn out. But he was like, "I'm best friends with the dude. Uh, I see his girl. He has no clue what Instagram is, and she's like posing like mostly nude, provocative pictures, like all over the place, letting them hang out, like uh, talking to guys in the mentions, but not like anything damning. Like, meet me at 5 p.m. We're gonna bang." Like nothing like that. Yeah, nothing like nothing like that. But um, his thing was like he didn't even want to show them to his friend. He's like, "What do I do? What would you do? Do you want like a chronological order or <laughs> does one involve like, eight minutes in a documentation? <laughs> what no, a man, friend! I would show you immediately. I guess how, if the friend's not like if it's a coworker or something, I'm like probably not. So, so you let that ride? You're just like, he's like, me and the Miz are going on date night again. And he says, it's going to be swell. And you're like, holy shit. <laughs> like, I've seen her. <laughs> it's some pictures, pal. I mean, if he wants to believe that he has an imaginary wife, I and mean, that's fine. Everyone has their own little uh, paradise. Their, their thing, their life they live, I guess so. Mm-hmm. I've got one for you. Go ahead. Bring me a scenario. Bring me a good one. I'm almost on laundry, it's so very I have nothing concise. to distract me. It's very, yeah, it's very concise. So you have a superpower that allows you to form a bubble of serenity. You feel perfectly happy in it, mm. and nothing can come in your bubble, oh. and you're, you're oh, safe no. and secure. This sounds like my new headphones. Oh. <laughs> and there is one person that ruins them all the time. Yeah. Jesus. So if your anyway. wife or girlfriend is screaming at you, do you use the serenity bubble? Can they see it? They can definitely see it, and they can see how much you enjoy being in it. <laughs> they can't. They can't get you out of it, though, right? No, they, can they weigh you out. But yeah, they, they can't can take you out, out right? Yep. Uh, <laughs> no, I, uh, you really push it. <laughs> You'd be sitting in that serenity bubble, feeling great, but she would remember that forever. So I know, I know. <laughs> so I got these really nice new headphones. I probably promoted them somewhere. Yeah. Um, there's Sweet. noise canceling. I downloaded FLAC files to my phone and I can like transfer stuff in APTX HD and it sounds so beautiful. And sometimes I'll be sitting there like this, like really getting into it and my kids in bed. So technically I figure in my head, my responsibilities are over. And I can see someone over in the corner of the room, like motioning to me and I try and ignore it. And it's like, it's like, what do you want me to throw something out for you? Do you want me to go check on something that doesn't need to be checked on sitting there? Yeah. And, and it's, it's a choice. I have not made a single song. I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) I know, but one time it led to uh, an altercation. (laughs) I hate your headphones. I'm going to, Throw them in the trash one day. <laughs> hey, you won't. You know, oh, one of those standoffs. Now you got to keep your headphones stuff. with you forever. <laughs> so now I keep them. Take a picture of where they were before I leave the room. You know, like normal stuff. So that's it. Hmm. Do you think if there was an app that women could file everything that they need their husband to do and their grievances, do you think they'd use it? I don't think they would use it. No, because they think of them on the fly. They have to do them immediately. It's imperative that it happens right now. Right. It's not like a, a list that you can get to at your leisure. It has nothing to do with your leisure. In fact, <laughs> it's the opposite. I'm going to vacuum right in front of this game forever. 
Oh, I could feel it. Uh, quick shout out. I found a new CD. I want to oh. give them. Hey, let the people know. I'm really digging it. It's a three piece jazz group. They're instrumental, but it's not like avant garde jazz. We're like. Yeah, it's flute. It, yeah, it's very um, real deep, fairly mellow, um, but upbeat at the same time. Huh. Here, not not mellow is the wrong word. Tonal, as opposed to atonal. Like it sounds real nice. Huh. Like it sounds good. It resolves. It's good notes. It's not like supposed to blow your mind and be fast and weird or something. I don't know what atonal means. Atonal is um, when people purposely play like notes that kind of sound bad. You're talking about like. Good. um Mahi Vishnu Orchestra, yeah, or like, um, you know, like, um, the Mars Volta does it a lot. You know them. They're jarring, yeah, at certain times. Yeah, it's yeah, like, it's, it's there's a distance like, there. Yeah, 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 yes, exactly. But, um, the name of this group is Go Go Penguin. Go Go Penguin. Let's check right them out. Down. Um, they just released their new CD, A Humdrum Star. And you can listen to the whole CD, like, straight through. It's, it feels pretty cool. It's like background music, like if you're studying or doing something or chores around the house or mm. something. It's good. Nice. Nice. I'm giving them a plug. I listen to my uh, fancy headphones being like, it's nice. It's nice. That's good. That's good. It feels good to get away for a little bit, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I'd like to clarify something from last time. I said that a, a scrod is, is haddock, but a scrod is actually young cod. Yeah, it's, I was very confused and. I would have said something right away, but yeah, I thought, well, wait till you correct it. Yeah, I didn't want to piss off anybody. It's always the, you know, you gotta, I didn't want to have to avoid any wayward semen. <laughs> well, I just did laundry. I got rid of a lot of that. <laughs> uh, is it water soluble? I hope. <laughs> well, I'm checking out your laundry. There's a white mark on your, on your, what's that? A sock? Is there a sock right there? Blue sock? Down lower. Oh, that's inspect. That's too new. Yeah, no one would use that sock for that purpose. Yeah. But um, I, I didn't know that Scrod can actually... Someone caught one that was 93 pounds. Jesus Christ. That's a, that's a big Scrod, held by a big, massive man. It is, which, interesting you bring up something so vicious, something so powerful, something so visceral. What I think is next is everyone's favorite part of the podcast. Oh, yes. People be screaming on the streets. Tearing, tearing their, their eyes out. Eyes out. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that oh. was awesome. Yep. Andy Weir. Ripping the flesh. Ben Horizon. Pulling out. Scraping their neck till they're bleeding everywhere. Mm. Ripping apart oh, each other's limbs. The audio is so good. You don't need any other senses. And they're just screaming... Celebrity challenge. Celebrity challenge. Oh, folks, huh. it's time. I got a good one. Oh yeah. <coughs> <laughs> Woo, clear your throats. Clearing it up, guys. Hey, Kevin Sorbo. Oh, he and is hold on, Hercules, Lucy, and Lucy Lawless. Huh? Xena, warrior princess. Interesting. Let's go head to head and find out who really has it in a little something we here in the States call jello punching. Hmm. You make a big mold of jello, make several. It really depends on how strong they look when they come into the studio. Mm-hmm. And I want them to punch it as hard as they can. We'll do like super slow mo cameras, and whoever bangs up the most jello wins. Talk about like most vibration caused. Oh, I'm talking about jello flying jello off punches. from the hits. Yeah, uh, she should be able to kick too. I feel like Zena could kick pretty well. Yeah, does she get to use her little? Uh, no, no the circle thing. Yeah. No, that's dangerous. <laughs> that, that's an unfair advantage. So, Kevin Sorbo and Lucy Lawless. I know you guys are big into charity. So we're Nick and Dan here at the Unpanders. A dollar we'll match you up for every to ounce of Jello. A dollar for every ounce of Jello. <laughs> yeah. Those are fluid ounces. pounds of jello punched by these <laughs> celebrities. Just doing it for the kids. Mm. Dan crying, opening his wallet. Maybe $40. <laughs> uh, that would be a lot. The, I'm talking about the difference of the amount of jello. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh-huh. Whoever does more will take the difference. I'm the lesser. 
Yes. Yes. All right. Ah, I do like oh, that no. challenge. It's very, it's uh, pretty cool. very it's visual. Awesome. It's yeah. Yeah. You're going to need the eyes for that. The sound of the jello. jello. We'll just record the sound of that jello hitting the floor. Let the jello hit the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I like it. Uh, yeah, that's very nice. Very nice. Which leads us almost to our next one. Hercules, Xena, mm. what do they have in common? The Olympics. Greece? I don't have that note. There's nothing in my notes about that one. Hmm. Well, they watched the Olympics. I'm sure they did. Or do. Or are watching. Because they're happening right now. The Winter yeah. Olympics. Really? Where at? At Kung Kung Chang. <laughs> Pretty Pretty good. Chang. Good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, when the Olympics started. Originally? There was like 873 BC, I'm going to say. Ooh, dang. I had almost 900 BC. I, yeah, 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 I think so. I think it's right. Good. They have photographic memory for one number. All my life, I just used, I just wasted it. I can't, I can't remember it. my it's only one part of one podcast somewhere that may or may not be forgotten. This could be the good one, though. Could change know? our lives, yeah. Good, good thing. 873 BC. It's pretty good. Pretty good. I read that they, they did just kind of like practice warfare. They're just pretty much training. They call them games, yeah, but they're pretty much training for war, I would say, because they had right. like chariots and horses and they'd throw spears at like a pole. They had sweeter summer Olympics than we do now. It's like, oh, shit. Think about it. Like gladiators, it was wrestling. essentially. Wrestling was one of the originals, yep. right? Uh-huh. But they would do it uh, naked and sweaty and oily. Kind of like yeah, a Live 8 in Philadelphia. I guess so. Uh, uh, anyway. Do you think, um, we would go by the records, but athletes tend to get better every year at all these events? That's the weird thing that I'm watching now, since we're right at the cusp of not being Olympic athletes. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Everyone who's like thirty something is like, yeah. oh, he's 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 in the twilight years. This is the Olympic last year. Yeah. This, this is, is his last shot. gasp, his breath before he dies. You're like, yeah. okay, let's let the man <laughs> let the man Olympic for a he's minute. Off Going of it. forward, there are certain sports that you can last a while. I was just watching uh, the women's. Uh, uh, oh my god. <laughs> I can't. Say. Yeah, the 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 uh, the half pipe. Yeah, it was a half pipe. Freestyle or is you there points for flips and stuff like that? Yeah, no? yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Freestyle. So you, you go back and forth of the pipe, yeah. and they do little it's flips, at one eight, ten eighties, and whatnot. Right. There's one that's uh, her name. I think her name is Kelly. Kelly Clark. I, I don't actually like, know the women. I was watching the dudes the other day. Uh, well, she's 34 and still doing it. That's real. Uh, yeah, that's exactly. She did. She came in fourth. So I was like, she's oh, in pretty. She didn't medal. No, that's because she's past her prime. But um, just like us. But you're looking at it. You got to say, for certain sports, like the the prime age is like some of them, like gymnastics, like the Summer Olympics, it's like sixteen. Fourteen, right? Yeah, okay. it's like before you even know what you're really doing in life, and like you have to hit it. You have to be born in a certain year for you to be like really competitive at it. I, I yeah. think you can make miss your window. Like if you were like fourteen or like thirteen, oh, you might right, be too you're young. Right, there were four years for yeah. your sport, right? Because summer to winter, right? Those are transcribed. And then yeah, next time you could be like in a growth spurt. You'd be too large, too whatever, too too. Awkward. Right. So not necessarily born a certain year. You have to grow a certain time. Uh-huh. Hmm. That's a good point. Like most of the ones that are competing are like eighteen year olds, twenty year olds. <coughs> How about the swimmers? Like uh, Phelps, some of them. What was there? Was Phelps. he an outlier two years ago when he um, got all those goals again? I feel like so he that was, was two like, years ago. Older. Phelps is the same age as as we are. Is he? he went to high school with my wife, actually. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Claim to fame. It's called the humble brag, folks. He's trying to be friend famous. of a friend. Friend of a friend. It's almost like I had the most gold medals in history. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like it, isn't it? Yeah, feel, I could just feel those gold medals. Uh, I was going to buy some off eBay and bring them to work, make people believe. <laughs> <laughs> and then say, if I can do it, you can too. And then see if that motivates them yeah, at all. Bank up like a meter dash, <laughs> a 40 meter dash, or like. 
390. <laughs> a half a meter dash. dash. <laughs> <laughs> It's just everyone waiting at the starting line. Whoever has the best <laughs> reflexes wins. Yeah. Uh, you do it, right? Super, super slow-mo camera, right? Whoever has the most reaction time. They don't even ha- – do they have an Olympic sport that's just pure no, reaction time? Half a meter dash. Wow. You just created the best event. I would watch that. Like people train their whole lives. <laughs> <It's> like <they're laughs> stretching and stretching and doing all these moves. And it's like, Daddy, what are you doing? And he's like, Shh, I'm getting ready. And then like, there's the guy with the gun, and they're just standing there, and everyone's on the block just waiting. And it's like, Dah! and they, they just take two steps, and they're like, oh. <laughs> people, are, people are going insane. You're they're celebrating like, before you cross the finish line? No, someone grabs the guy next to him. He's like, we just witnessed history. Did you see that? Did you see that? Oh, my God. Oh, they go to the super slow-mo, and it's like someone just barely pulled ahead with their shin or something. <laughs> <laughs> my god these athletes are incredible <laughs> you trained for four years with you know <laughs> sensei so and so I could I could definitely see it there's definitely markets that are not they, they're not ever, they should be part of the Olympic Games or like gaming and reaction speed and all that stuff but you can't I don't know if you can capture it into like a single moment you know an event yeah like what is like there's different reaction speeds for different things and different. Mm-hmm. Plus, you can't. I don't know if NBC would really support it because they wouldn't. Re- <laughs> they'd report on all like the gamers and have all the wrong facts and then talk about something stupid. Did he? He beat Earthworm Jim in under an hour. It's like, no. <laughs> yeah. thanks. I guess. I mean, well, so what? He cheated or something? I don't know. I think it was. I think it's Johnny Mosley who's doing the announcing in, in the half pipe, and he's you know all the moves. I don't know anything about snowboarding, but. All moves are pretty much spins and like flips, right? They're all and holding uh, on to ninety them. some percent of them, like mm-hmm. almost all of them. There might be like two or three moves that aren't are skateboard moves. Exactly. Yeah. And then your degree of rotation, mm-hmm. which because of their um, height and mu or force of friction, they uh, <laughs> <laughs> they uh, they reach uh, higher heights and everything, so they can get more rotation. Mm-hmm. Like uh, someone did a sixteen something, and I was like, "That's that's a lot of turns." Fourteen dudes, man. Fourteen forty is that number. That's crazy. Well, I don't know. You can't even. Yeah, that's got to be right. It could be, but then the one after that is the one a guy was attempting, and I think he just didn't land it, and he crashed. So a half like, spin oh. or a full spin after that? Yeah. Hmm. So that's what one eighty time plus fourteen forty. Do it on the goddamn podcast. I've been drinking. <laughs> Yeah, it's difficult to do. It's over a thousand, folks. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You heard it here first. Over a thousand. <laughs> My guy will go over a thousand. Um. So here's a real question about the Olympics for you. Sure. Do they suck? You know, I I enjoy watching them. Do you? And I don't. I think they suck. Well, I like them because my. There's, there's like there's an aspect of it like grace or power or agility or something and they're, they're kind of good the way that NBC presents them it's oh, it. awful it's really like American now, rocks and how do we rock more and, now do you interesting that you said that next hmm do you think uh, Olympics was greater in let's say 96 or what was it in Atlanta was it Atlanta Atlanta, Georgia. Why do you why do you pick that? An earlier time when you were younger, or um, I remember my buddy Hank was really into the Olympics, and he was one of my best friends at the time. I was in grade school, so this is Atlanta. <coughs> was it ninety six? Yep. Good guess. Um, but he was very into like he wore face paint, American face paint. Huh. And he had a sticker for the American flag. Everyone in the family was wearing like red, white, and blue shirts. Huh. And they all watched it as a family. And I thought, that's cool. And like my parents weren't into it, but they were like, it was on TV. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like more people were talking about it. And it was like, you were proud of it. You were like, yeah, did you? We have 18 gold this year. Germany's got two. And I think Germany was the bad guy in 96. Don't ask me how I think that way or whatever. Hmm. Maybe because I was learning about, you know. The Did you check gold. the all-time golds, silver, all-time medals? Is it winter? It's Norway, isn't it? It probably is, but like overall. 
No, no, no I have no idea. Industry. U.S. by a lot. U.S. by almost double. I think the next. I mean, country, I know, I know we're country really good at it, Germany. I think. It's an interesting. And Russia. Method. I think they're both up there. Well, well, here's what I'm asking. Back in '96, like, um, it was here. People loved it. I feel like I really rooted for people, and mm-hmm. whether that's because I was young or not. Now I'm like, who cares? I, I feel that too. And I it think could that be that we're jaded and older, right? Yeah, and we can no longer compete. There's no way you could think that you were going to make it into something. <laughs> You're <laughs> yeah, not going to become right, something. Because right, you did have dreams back yeah. then, and hope <laughs> and a future. More I also money. wonder, though, it there, there's this nationalism spin that I can't get over. I feel like we as a people are less nationalistic now. Huh. Is that true? Think about it. I'm not gung ho American. There are there are still people who are very American flag profile. I love the mm. troops. Like I I um, pray to the troops. I pray for the troops. I pray with the troops. I think the problem is that you envision someone who's like a soldier and like they're perfectly a soldier in your mind when you're sixteen, you know, when you're young. And then you get older and your neighbor's a soldier. The guy you work with is, was a soldier. And, like, those guys are imperfect. Like, people are imperfect. Even these athletes that are winning golds, they're not perfect people. It's right. just Except a Ryan Lochte. Let's a record show guy. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry? Ryan Lochte? You're talking about the other guy, right? Phelps? He's actually perfect, a perfect person. Not going to yeah. talk, talk, talk about him. But, yeah, these people are imperfect. So, it's like, all of a sudden, it's like your vision of everything in the past is now skewed because you realize that they're just people. So. It could be, but I also feel like um, we hate our own country a little more. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that too. Is that presidential thing a little bit? Uh, uh, maybe. I don't know. I, Not a lot, I, but like a yeah. little there. I don't know. It, it becomes I don't a little get deep into it. I know. Scarred and marred because it's all... Bullshit. There's no. There's no pure... There's no pure angle you can't just walk straight and get to your solution in general um, also interesting uh i was watching ice skating last night mm-hmm. figure skating uh, yeah speed skating. no figure nice beautiful um asian american mm. girl was doing her move and i yeah. was looking at her thigh and i was like she has a tattoo on her thigh really she did it was like in her inner thigh so like when she's doing her slow spin, I was like staring at it, like what? American one? So hold on. So she's she's definitely Asian descent. I'm not sure which nationality. And I was saying, ah, that was a good clean landing. Like I can tell a clean landing. I can tr- kind of tell what a Lutz is versus a an axle versus a you know, no. I don't know much. Do you find her? Is this the USA tattoo? Yeah. And hold on. So I'm looking at this tattoo, and I'm like. Is this part I'm of her? Boo- I'm booing her because I figure you see her. Where's the A go? Who's in her crotch? Jesus, this guy. He's always going to the crotch. Maybe it goes to her A. <laughs> so I'm rooting against this woman. Not not because I know her or anything, because I'm patriotic for America. Uh-huh. And I figure she's scoring points for a different country. She's and I'm scoring. staring and I'm like, I think that says USA. And Michelle next to me, she goes. Yeah, look in the top left of the screen. It says USA. They're keeping <laughs> I'm like, oh, Jesus, I didn't know she was, oh, well, go, go. And I was like, I started rooting for her. But like. She's branded. It's a pretty cool brand. It really catches the eye, if you catch my saying. That's, that's a weird positioning because you can't see right. the whole USA. You can if she's doing one of those slow turns with her leg in the air. Let me tell you that. Uh. I'm I this she did break a historical record or something right for the USA team they never I think landed she, a triple lutz Oh possibly she did um no triple axle triple axle I don't know what it was She did it, she did it the other night last night two nights ago Yeah I saw it um live and I was like oh she landed that clean good job but I had no clue it was the first I had no clue the announcer's flipping shit and he's like oh my god <laughs> and I'm like, like oh, okay okay all right that was good that was good yeah <laughs> Golf clap. But it's just weird, like again, where do we draw the lines as to who's us, who's not us? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was rooting against her almost, like hoping she fell. And then I found out she was USA and I was like, ah, don't fall. Ah, win gold. There's a they also cross the lines. So it's like okay. What the heck is this? Ah, stupid. 
Baby back ribs. The baby <laughs> they back was to the baby back ribs song, but it was something oh, else. Yeah. It was the to check out her tattoo. It, that's check the out her tattoo, 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 tattoo. <laughs> check out the <laughs> USA. Yeah, 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 I got you. But it blurs the lines. There's these people that are like playing for these other countries because they couldn't get it in their own country. And it's like he was he's Korean American, but he's playing for the Olympic What's... Association of Russia. <laughs> so what is the deal with Russia? They were caught doping, like most of their athletes, so they're not allowed to use their flag, but they're allowed to still play in the games as the Olympic Committee. So they don't get medals attributed to their country. They get their own medals attributed to the Olympic So Council. a year later, mm-hmm. they win a gold, let's say. They live in Russia still. They still play for Russia. Yep. Whatever. Um, two, four years down the road, they're back for Russia. Do they say uh, previous gold medal winner, so and so from Russia? Do they He's refer? A gold do they refer back to that person as a gold medalist from Russia? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I have to. I mean, what are you going to say? Well, she won gold here, Jim, when she was she was in the ethers. Uh, now that she's back, she's in Russia. She's a new person. She's never won gold. But we have a feeling she knows how to win gold. Let's get to, let's go today. And I like, feel like uh, they cut to like an older person who can't quite remember, and they're like one of them <laughs> golds from, and then it just like cuts back to normal announcing. Well, a little <laughs> bit like the um, you remember Joe Paterno? The whole thing came uh, out where he silenced. You're talking about the the yeah. thing with the other guy that was really creepy. Yes, yes yeah. So um, he I turned a blind guy on a bunch of sexual yeah, yeah. abuse. Yep, in this camp. And after he died, they um, posthumously removed his record of having the most wins in college football ever by a coach. They were like, it doesn't count. We're taking the award. And I was like, why? Well, here's my question. So who has it now? The guy who had 400 less, whatever it is. It's He's like, already dead too, right? I don't know if he was, but like, what's the point? He really doesn't have the most wins in college. Here, Joe Paterno award um, remanded. Is that the right word? Coach. I, I that's John Golardi. So they give it to John Golardi, right? Who? Well, no, John Golardi is number one. Joe Paterno is oh. number two. Did they take away the wins which he had that assistant coach <laughs> subtract out the wins? Oh, that's <laughs> such a that's a strange maneuver. Yeah, but I mean, same with the Russia thing. Like, if the person wins, the person wins. You can label it however the hell you want. Yeah, Barry Bonds, the home run record. Like you put an asterisk next to it, it's still the record, right? I if someone know. hit two less than that record, but they beat the old record, does someone say this is the new record? It's never been done before. The new gold standard, sixty-eight or whatever the number is, and it's like mm, someone hit seventy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, come on, we know. They need to like measure the thickness of their neck and then divide by <laughs> the centimeters extra. <laughs> Just, I mean, you're starting to split hairs. You you become whatever yeah it's no longer it's no longer human capability it's human capability with enhancements which is where i think we're going in the future so people think- will be assisted by other things augmentations yeah and then the olympic athlete will be the basic human form without all the robot. upgrades <laughs> robot yeah robotic ai electronic olympics that would be wow. kind of impressive to watch don't, actually don't like robots you know, like the the drones, the two twelve hundred drones, and the, did you watch the opening ceremony? No. What did they do? They were skiing down a mountain, and they had the drones do like a a person skiing like above them, so they're flying down the mountain as a like a logo, and then as they a person. Chase. Yeah. So I mean, that's kind of impressive, considering that we're probably less than a decade away from them doing anything you want. I thought we were less than a decade away from like moving into space and like doing all sorts of crazy stuff and like having floating cars that go down the street like a Blade Runner or like the Flintstones or excuse me the Jetsons. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I think whether it's capitalism or favoritism or nihilism or just the economy in general, I think a lot of times progress is stopped. It's like this rubber band effect where we're like, whoa, we're making so much progress, but then it has to be checked by the FDA, then which one's cheaper, then which one's this, et cetera, et cetera. 
I just feel like we're so far away because, like, the microwave. Someone made, there's a comedian who does a whole bit on this. If you invented the microwave today, we didn't have one before, we'd be like, it cooks shit and it gets hot in the middle, and sometimes the other parts are cold. So I was like, this isn't a finished product. Yeah. But it's been around for like 70 years. I said 70. I have no clue. 40? 30? I think in like the 80s is when it came out. I thought it was like 70s, but maybe I'm way off. Or 60s even. Or uh, I have to look this up now. You, yeah. Microwave. But like the comedian's like, yep, you can't put metal in there. It'll blow up. Yep, you got to center it on the plate. Even when you center it, it's going to get hot here, cold here. 60s. Wow, 1946. So you were right with 70 years. More than 70 years. They called it, they didn't call it a microwave, they called it a radar range. <laughs> like radiation, maybe? Oh, that's a terrible idea. But I mean, <laughs> but the point being that it's like, wow, the future's here. This is crazy. But sometimes it's stilted or it's it halts suddenly for no reason. I find that like. I find that kind of interesting that you mentioned that because. Like my field is electronics, all sorts of electrical stuff, and most of the and software as well. But most of the like innovations, they were either already made in like the seventies, already like patented in the seventies, and like things that you build on now are just like building blocks of those in- initial patents. Because it's tied to a brand. A brand can't release a new Bluetooth technology that's already out because it would make all their other objects obsolete. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about like the the basic understanding of like how things work, like people already take those and then mash them up and make their own version of it. It's not even a version. It's like they extrapolate what it's going to be and they make patents on it before you even get there. So these people like generate Uh, patents before you can have technology. But how does that slow it down? I know what you're saying. Like people already have patents on everything that's going to happen in 10 years because they can see the writing on the wall. It degrades your hope and ability to make it your own. So, like, if I, if that wasn't That's out hard. there now, and then people couldn't have a patent on it, or didn't have a patent on it, then I'd probably be trying to do it myself, but people would be reaping profits on whatever I could make. Unless so the patent like expires. Patent, patents are destroying America? <laughs> they might be, actually, but that's another discussion. Hmm. Interesting. I don't disagree. Yeah. Well, so we'll we diverge there. Out on the Olympics a little bit. Yeah. It's back. We'll go to the cost of the Olympics. Per this year or every year average? Um, I have two that I was surprised by, like Sochi and Beijing. Sure. Let's hear. 40 or $50 billion spent. I guess that's on everything. Inf- infrastructure yeah. mostly. So they say like actually holding the event is probably about a billion dollars, a billion and a half. And the Olympic Committee will pay about a billion dollars to the host country. For, for, for doing all the, like, the organization and having the athletes there and all that stuff. But, like, all the infrastructure, everything that's built in that country, that's all part of what that country pays. So they have to figure out, via their taxpayers, whatever revenue streams, how they're going to pay for, you know, the dorms they stay in, any changes they make, any transportation, all that wow. stuff. Which place, or is it all of them, where they're not even build up towns? That are going to have these, like the Russian one? Like the Sochi one, yeah. That was, like, you yeah. saw a lot of, like, they kept talking about stray dogs. And, wolves. Yeah, they kept having wolves <laughs> attack their, their athletes or something. And then they'd cut to, like, the unfinished buildings that were, like, supposed yeah. to be, like, palatial. But they, they were, like, I guess they didn't get funding in time to <laughs> finish them. I remember seeing shots of that. Because I guess America wanted to crap on the Russians. But right. I guess that's where their $40 billion went. Because they put it into these like little like villas on side on the side of the mountain, and they never got used. So how much does a country make from an Olympics? Is it all TV money? Because it can't be that much. I don't think they make any money. I think they put it all into the infrastructure, and then it sits in the infrastructure. So you lose money every time you have an Olympics. Pretty much. Which brings me to my next point. So there's only one host city that was selected for the Olympics to turn it down. That's awesome. Who was it? Germany? And, no, it was it was in the United States. Really? Or not, I think it was 1972. Yeah, it was Denver. Smart move, Denver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they, all. Yeah, they won the bid. Shove it, the Olympics. And the, the taxpayers voted to say that the taxpayers weren't going to foot the bill 
for any increase in cost, which the projected cost was like something around like $30 million. Right. And, yeah. And at the time that the vote was passed, they spent $1 million on nothing. They were like forming committees and stuff before that. They even spent like 3% of the budget. <laughs> and they were like, we better stop now. Yeah. We're going to lose this one. Hmm. Good on them. I can tell you the Olympics is boring. It is awful. It's the worst thing on TV, folks. But do you know how the Olympics is fun? Hmm. Sexually. Oh, yeah. You know where I'm going? To the Olympics. 1988 in Seoul. Uh, it's well known the Olympics are a... Bleep this out later. Bleep fest. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, as a joke, in 88, Seoul had all the con- all these condoms given to the athletes, except that they were put on the roofs of their houses. Like their little villas, their little uh-huh. whatever they were staying yeah, in. They were put on the roof? Yes. So started having wild sex on the roof. Oh, nice. Which is almost like what they thought would happen. That year, they banned outside sex at any Olympic event. It's now illegal. Outside sex? You mean sex with people that are not athletes? No, no, no. A band with sex with people outside of the... Outside. In the open. Uh, out, oh. Outdoors. It's frowned on them. Yeah, sorry. Outside. <laughs> Public. Outdoors. Public spaces. Public spaces. It's I thought they're, I thought they're defining who you could have sex with. Olympic athletes only were looking for the purebreds. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, did you see this number? No. What's that? The number of uh, condoms given out uh, for this Olympics. It's got to be in the billions. No, no, no. No, no, it's just for the athletes. Oh, just for the athletes. athletes. How many athletes are there? Uh, I'm going to do my math backwards. How many athletes? Yeah, figure it out. Um, where are they? <laughs> Korea. Well, the winter is smaller than the, the summer. Right. Uh, doesn't have a good number. I would say an estimate was probably around what, 3,000 maybe. Good number. It's a good enough number. They gave out 110,000 condoms. So even if you even if I overestimate. Do you know they, they did the math? This equates to 37 condoms per athlete. So, yeah, so wait. I, I almost tried to do the math for you, but I was like, ah, I can't. I'm trying to do the math and I'm failing. So I think there's actually more like, no, I think I was on point. Were you? Yeah. 110,000. Yeah. Divided by 37 per. That's what? Tw- yeah. 2,972. Oh, you didn't share this information. Were you looking at it and you decided not to share it? I was, I was, I was waiting for your official. I didn't, I actually didn't search it. I was ready oh. to click on a link, and I just avoided clicking. Anyway, on yeah, yeah. So apparently, they're handing out like all these condoms, and uh, all these athletes are going on Tinder, from what I hear, hmm. to try and get their bang on. But like, Tinder is very location based, hmm. so it's like your neighbor's an Olympian, your neighbor's an Olympian, like, and you're trying to it's weird. It's like a celebrity bang fest a little bit, but not celebrity, like Olympic athlete. Well, you got to think that most of the people are probably like 17, 18, 19. So it's like a college like and, orientation. And wait, they're probably all in Sexual pretty good shape, right? Oh, oh, man. The prime. Oh, yeah. They're in their prime. The prime. They're going for it. <laughs> I just call it yeah. the prime from now on. Like athlete on athlete action is the prime. They have um, direct quote from Ryan Lochte here. Oh. <clears throat> He's a, he, had, he had a girlfriend his last Olympics. Oh. And he really was ashamed of it because... Now that he's single, I'll tell you the truth. 70 to 75% of all them athletes, they be having sex. Mm. So thank you, Ryan Lochte. Words of wisdom. And now he plans on. You know, there's so much tension built up over the course of training. Shoulders. Yeah. yeah. Someone's going to loosen that up. Mm-hmm. Oh. So I do want to make a shout out to yeah. the Olympics. Shout out to never being an Olympic athlete. Ever. It's fantastic. We could actually go to college and just do that normally. True. Potentially. We could have. Uh-huh. In a different life. To the chances we had. <laughs> <sighs> so let's go to the cost. 
for like each one of these athletes, what do you think it costs for them to train and to become the best? Million dollars uh, every two years, so half a million a year. Like them personally? Yeah. No. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> lower than that. Like most of these people have like, like side jobs. Like the one guy is like a plumber, just to make ends I meet. They don't have a, a side job. Some of like if you have recognition, if you're marketable, then maybe you make money as like an icon. But most people don't. So like for figure skaters, they estimated that you spend fifty to seventy five thousand a year just to be competitive. Be competitive. Yeah. Oh, uh, I was thinking differently. Like, uh, if, like what's his name? Phelps. Feeding him and housing him and training him probably costs five hundred thousand dollars a year. Kind of sounds like a farm animal when you put it that way. <laughs> I don't know. Well, like once he's after he's won gold, it doesn't anyway. matter. I I think if you that's a, that's another thing I don't like about the Olympics is that there's like a thousand different varieties of the same sport, like swimming, w- swimming, or swimming five hundred meters, swimming or, really, swimming yeah. a thousand feet. Stupid. You shouldn't have that many golds. It should just become normalized. Like you've won seventy percent of gold. <laughs> like that's also awful. <laughs> they give you a medal at like seventy percent gold. It's like it 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 changes. They give you one medal, but every time you lose, you lose a little bit of that gold. A little bit of gold. <laughs> that comes back. It's like like the Boy Scouts. You get a little. You get a little bit of badge. You get an extra badge. And his ribbon says that he's won 76% gold. Oh my God. <sighs> Made her sound like a nagging mother, but 76% gold in the Olympics is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, how much the gold medals are actually worth? Like physically, you know. sell weight of gold? About 500 bucks. Oh, I was going to get 3,000. They're, huh. they're not pure gold. Um, hmm. And you can buy them on eBay. For how much? 30 bucks. Imitation. They look pretty good. I kind of want to get a couple now. Yeah. My uncle always used to say he won gold because he had a fake one. And his, his children always looked up to him up until the time when they <laughs> realized that he was You can buy him on eBay for 30 some bucks. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Uh. Hmm. So how you well. Feel? Huh? Good. How you feeling about the sports? What do you like? Let me say winter sports. Well, I had a, I had a tab open here. I lost it though. About the hockey thing? Oh, the NHL? You want to talk about that one? Yeah, not really. It's disappointing that the NHL can't see past money to just let well, their hold on, now. hold on, no, no, no. I'm going to actually side with the NHL. Really? Yeah. I mean, if I pay a guy $4 million a year to be a defenseman for the Vegas Knights, and he says, oh, my country, Austria, we have a good team this year. I'm going to play for them for two and a half weeks. And I'm like, okay. And he buys his way out, so I don't pay for it. That's great. And then he goes out there and busts his ass more than he busts for my team because it's patriotism in his country. He's blocking shots. He breaks three teeth here. He's busting his ass. He comes over. Oh, he twisted his ankle. He's out six weeks with my team. Oh, thanks, dude. Hmm. Congratulations, Austria. Did you guys win gold? No, we won the bronze. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you signed a contract with the NHL. If you wanted to be a goddamn Olympic athlete, go do Olympics. Don't hmm. accept my money and then accept Olympic accolades only because they line up. Like if they didn't line up and it was your off season, go ahead. Go crazy. Now, what happened some years, the years that it did happen, did um it line up almost with it's called the Olympic break, I guess, when the NHL does, used to do it. Well, the NHL did it for several years. Right. What was it called? The Olympic break? Yeah. They'd break for two weeks so that people can just two and a half weeks, something do whatever. Like that. I think it would mess with the flow of the season. Plus, you'd get people that would get injured in the Olympics, and then it would just disrupt, disrupt things. Right. And if a player were to do that now where they said, you know, I'm not going to play in the NHL. I'm just going to forfeit my money and play in the Olympics. Well, if they forfeit their money, I mean... But they're like got to be a. They have to be a star on their team, right? To be Olympic. Yeah. Uh, not this. To be in Canada or U.S. Yeah. Yeah. So like, if uh, if the star of one of the stars <coughs> of the Flyers were to play in the Olympics, then it would like really hurt the Flyers. They would. They'd be missing right. probably like their top line. Right. A lot of teams would be missing like three to five players that are good players. 
So, like, I don't know. Like, there's got to be a middle ground there where you can, like, like, they have, in football, they say, like, you have, like, a franchise player. Maybe you have, like, an Olympic player. You, like, you designate one guy. It doesn't have to it doesn't have to be a certain guy. You just say one guy from every team can go play for the Olympics. But would he have to be a certain nationality? Obviously. That's a problem. Yeah, that's tricky. Well, then you run into problems. What if you pick an Austrian guy? Because they're like, there's like no one else that's good as Austrian. <laughs> and like, he doesn't make the Austrian team, but you already designated him. You're like, damn it. I don't even know that you could plan for that. Like, that's, I guess that's the good, that's the, that would be the fun part of it. Is you'd like, who wants to screw Wait, over? And then you have to pick Team Canada and then on that guess, pick who stays home or goes or whatever. I don't know. I guess that, that's the hard part. It's hard part because the NHL has to figure out. Like, they're probably going to send a majority of, yeah, Canadians, Americans. And then if they lose any of those guys, then the whole the whole team is probably screwed. So you're really weighing one person's gold versus, like, 20 other people's. Well, you're also you know, saying, you're taking it aside and saying, I know this is the NHL season, this is your job. You want to go home and represent your country because that's what you care for. You're saying, oh, the Olympics is more important, and it only comes around once every four years. This is just the NHL every year. Yeah, you're making yourself less important. So yeah, and the Olympic Committee said that they weren't going to support the uh, the financial element of supporting the NHL. So like the NHL required that they pay this certain amount of money, and the Olympic Committee said that we don't do that for other athletes. Uh-huh. Why do we do that? Yes. Why would we do that do. for you? So now that's why the NHL. Another reason. Yeah. Listen, I'm on the NHL side, and I don't like the NHL. I think it's a stupid organization. I think it's a stupid sport. But I don't like, ever since they instituted the cap, the cap has really been, like, dissolving teams' personality. I feel like every team's kind of almost the same now. I don't think it's that. I'm trying to think of what... It's that we had an amazing team. When we when we when when they started to institute, institute the cap, we had a when team that had, like... Personalities are not in the NHL anymore. I guess that too is a really like most of the people are generic. Oh my. You don't have like a Jeremy Roenick. No, you don't have any of them. No. You got like the PK Subans who are fun and crazy and everybody's either divided on them. And you've got like a few others maybe. Don't even name even. their names because they don't like them. <laughs> I know what you're thinking about. So let's go back to the sports, the Olympic sports. So like the winter ones, I can name them. Because they're very short. There's like 16 of them. There's alpine skiing, biathlon, bobsleigh, cross country, curling, figure skating, freestyle skate, skiing, ice hockey, luge, Nordic combined, uh, short trek, speed skating, skeleton, ski jumping, snowboarding, and speed skating. So we like it, folks. We like it a lot. We're turning off. Hey, have a good Yeah. One. So, yeah, I don't like lists. I'm sorry that I just read those off because half of those are bullshit. It's like some What's- of them. Uh, skull? Uh, skeleton? That's like part yeah, of what the luge. Hell that? That's where you do luge, but you do it front facing. <laughs> oh. right. Yeah, I like I like watching. I respect the idea of it. I yeah. just don't know that you can do that for four years to train, and then you do it, and it's like. I, don't know. I like that you pick that one out because I was actually curious about the rules, and the rules are that you have to be a minimum weight because weight matters a lot if you're starting uh, at the top of a hill. The- and I think that most of the gold medalists are people that are like taller and heavier than most people. So there's like a, a certain like profile. It happens for every sport that they're right. Of like, a weight yeah. and height profile. If you're the shortest and heaviest, or if you're oh, the shortest uh, five and foot lightest. ten, uh, three hundred pound basketball stars. I understand. Mm-hmm. So like luge and skeleton are the same way. If you are heavier, you have more potential to have more speed. You just have to control it. Like the skills there, where you have to control it, but like I, I, w- I would. The, I, do you know what the cutoff is? It's like 196 pounds or something for luge. Mm-hmm. So that means like most of the people that I know are not 196 pounds. Like the average person is probably not 196. Oh how, shit! You just made me depressed as hell. Well, how much do you weigh? I think I'm about. I'm usually between 180 and 190. Exactly. You wouldn't but hold make on. it. I've been getting fat for the past three months. Uh, I looked at myself today in the webcam. I looked real fat. I'm over 196. Yeah. I guarantee it. I'm yeah. probably creeping too. It's uh, the 720p. You need 180. 
You <laughs> shouldn't listen to what I suggested. Mm-mm-mm. But like, there's no, there's no, like, there's a certain physical element to it that is just your body type, which is not what I would want from a sport. It's no, interesting to right. watch. And, right, right, right. I agree with that. But it doesn't apply to real life. Like when, when is there ever a time where you're like, oh, I need to jump on this sled and go faster than everything else? Like, <laughs> none of them are. Then what is <laughs> hockey? Then I mean. Your, your favorite sport. It's like, when would I have to, oh my God, blades are on my feet and I'm on ice. I have to get across the crunch. <laughs> oh my God, but I've got a stick and I have to move this rubber, vulcanized rubber right across the ice. <laughs> yes. The team sports, I would say, are different than the solo ones. Fair, fair. I, I, I love team sports more than solos. Yeah. Like the biathlon makes sense because you're like skiing and shooting. Like if you're mm. trying to hunt something, Maybe you're skiing and shooting in some <laughs> country. Exactly I don't know. Fifty kilometers to the left, we have to go and hit bullseye. <laughs> you're killing a squirrel. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's a tiny bullseye. You have to hit it. Hmm. Well, I think we should wrap it up because you're I, you're playing a drink there. Are you trying <laughs> to dilute it? Is that just root beer now? I brought down some rum. Oh, you saved some. Uh, literally. I'll show the bottle. Yeah, no one can tell what that was. I'm sure that's illegal or something. I was going to go through the summer sports, but there's twi- twice as many. So, and there's still twice. hockey. There's still hockey in summer for some reason. Really? Yeah. <sighs> um, real quick. I am, um, so I was looking at our YouTube channel. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is just this is what I'm saying. And Ted Stoppable 17. Mm. I think he wanted Unstoppable, but it was taken. But he's mm. Ted. Good, good call, buddy. Yeah, but he's Stoppable. He wrote, Where do you guys get your shirts? Hmm. Damn, he's noticing, huh? Henley? He's talking about like me. Henley? Huh? He's talking about me, but maybe he's talking about both of us. So we'll both answer. You a stag? Um, Ted Stoppable 17, the store. Dan, you're up. I just owned out. What did you say? <laughs> Where do I get mine? the store. Where do you get yours from? Oh, online. Cool. See? Yeah. Hey, Ted Stoppable, thanks for writing in. Anyone else you want to write in? You want to email us? You want to write on YouTube? Out. You want to uh, donate to our Patreon? What's the, uh, can you read that? I can't read it. Some old Navy. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. Speaking about breaking name brands, dude. <laughs> yeah. Old Navy, we're going to have to charge you money for this shirt. You're going to have to pay me to wear it. Yep. Um, so, yeah, if you guys like the thing, just subscribe, whatever. Unless you're Dildan. In which case. <coughs> he, um, he got a new job. Oh, Real congratulations. Good. Sorry, he tried to get a new job. Uh. <laughs> that's that wrong. He didn't get it. Ah. Uh. Uncongratulations. He um he needed a suit, executive suit, like mm-hmm. a suit shirt. He doesn't have one. Uh-huh. Borrowed one from a friend of his. Didn't fit. Sure. Fit real well. He thought that's odd. He even read the tag to me. It was called the executive my business. Business. Well, I what ignored it. B I Z. There was these. <laughs> So my business is one word. And I thought that was weird. And he didn't, he said there was no size. I said, go for it, dude. Get the job. He was applying for data entry and, uh, secretary. He was sweating. He was sweating. Mm. Dripping down his back, down here to the butt. Mm-hmm. When it did, he, um, he did one of these. <laughs> and, uh, he was wearing a stripper executive outfit and it ripped away. Oh no! Right there on the interview, dude, just like pants, whoosh, and he felt the sweat coming. And then it occurred to him that, well, my buddy might be a nighttime male stripper. Why did I borrow executive my business? Get up in my business. The package looks real big right here. So <laughs> anyway, uh, made a silk or something. I guess, dude. I don't, it was, oh. All I know is he did not get a tip. He did not get the job. So. Shout out, Bill Band. Try again. Mm. And if you need a stripper outfit that makes you look like you're business savvy before you strip, 
the executive of my business. Go for it. Sometimes I wonder. I see women at my work wear things that look like maybe blankets, or things that are not. There, I would. I don't know if they're business etiquette because it's different. Mm-hmm. So, like, if I could wear anything that I wanted. Would they fire me, or would I, I, I be excluded? Would dress. I be allowed? Yeah. You wear dress? I want to wear silk. I want to be draped in silk. <laughs> if I was draped in silk and came in and just like swished and like constantly did this, <laughs> would they? Like hockey pants. Yeah. <laughs> so, would they say, um, Dan? I we're gonna have to we're gonna have a meeting, and then I'd be like, oh. and I just rip it off. <laughs> <laughs> is this the type of meeting you were looking for, guys? <laughs> NDA team? Meeting <laughs> boys? Yeah. Are you ready to get meted? Uh, God bless. We love America. You. Well, folks, hmm. I think we like you. We, we kind of like, like you a lot. This guy's going to like you a lot. <laughs> Too much. Uh, we got all the medals you could ever want. M E T A L S. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Alkaline myths. Yep. Well, tell them about all our socials. Uh, you can read them. Yeah. Go we, to them. we have some, but uh, you're going to have to Good find them. them. Good old. They're very difficult to find as long as you don't know our oh, name. Follow your heart. We're the unpanderers and we're everywhere and you want to be. Meep, meep, meep. <laughs> Good night, folks.